to do some planning. So I've got the little things out that I use in order to plan out my garden, which is pretty crude compared to some people's setups, I'm sure. I don't make a spreadsheet. I don't do any of that. I use some graph paper. That is it. <laughs> I don't get too technical with it because this is gonna go out into the garden with me. I mean, when I go to plant my things out, I'll literally take my papers out into the garden with me and put it out there. The first year that I had my raised beds, which was 2020, I guess, I built the beds in January of that year, and then I started planting out things as I would pick them up um, in, yeah, following that. Because I did start some seeds that year, however, not many of them made it into the actual garden because... I didn't know much about seed starting at that point. So some of them made it, other ones, I, other things I just picked up at local nurseries and things like that. So I didn't have a lot of organized um, thoughts about the garden at that point, but I was just ready to dive in. So I did. So the next year I did more of a square foot garden in the raised beds at that point. So I had three large raised beds. I believe they were eight by four was what I originally built. And then I had added maybe two or three different size ones after that. And so that year I did more of a square foot style garden. I also had hay bales that I was planting into that year. That was actually really fun and that worked great. Um, however, I will say what I did wrong with the hay bales and hopefully I can look back and find some pictures and video of those gardens of years past as well. I probably can. Um, and I'll put them in while I'm talking here. But anyway, the hay bales up against the wood of the raised beds, that was not a good idea because I kind of did, I did the raised beds that were in whatever place they were in, but I took those hay bales, put them up against the ends of the raised beds and everything grew great, but it's not really good for the wood raised beds to have that hay bale moisture and everything right up against that. So while that did kind of expand my growing space and it was really fun to experiment in that. If I had hay bales again, I just, somebody gave those to the, to us in the fall of the prior year. So I was like, ooh, I'm going to use these to plant into next year. And that worked well. It was actually really fun and the, the things that I put into them grew great. Um, but kind of ruined my raised beds having that moisture up against the wood. Um, so we ended up getting some termites. This is all treated wood too, but the termites were not deterred at all. We have a lot of termites here in Louisiana because of the climate. But anyway, that's just a tangent. So I'll try to put in pictures of my previous year's garden. So I did square foot gardening that year and um, I would do that again. I actually really liked that because it's more of an intensive style of gardening where you get a bigger yield now, like to my neighbor, my neighbor, Ronnie, he likes to visit and see the garden and everything. I love to go through with him. It looked like a hot mess and it was a hot mess because everything is really planted closely together. So flowers and vegetables and herbs and everything is really intensely planted in the raised beds when you do a square foot style garden. Um, so you really had to be on top of it. And I was fighting that year with pest and disease and things like that because things were pretty close together. Um, so, but that was fun and, and I tried it. Now the next year, which was last year, I did, um, let's see, was that last year? Yes. No, the next year I still had my raised beds but I did more of a thoughtful planning on them and I was able to space things more and, but it wasn't as intensive as I would have liked. And it's still, I didn't get a lot of production out of the prior, the next year's garden after that. So this last year in 2023 was when we sort of restyled everything. We had to take out the raised beds because they were rotten at that point. Most of them were rotten and falling apart, couldn't be salvaged. We ended up removing the raised beds from the garden area and we basically just spread the soil and now we have more of an in-ground style of garden with all of that really good soil and everything is still there. So you saw sort of the way things took shape last year, I think, and um, 
and it, last year was a pretty productive year for the vegetable garden. It wasn't as productive as I would have liked because I just wasn't able to give it a lot of attention and focus because I was really, really tied up with the farmer's market and my farmer's market business last year. I'm not, I don't regret that at all, but this year I am, we've reduced the number of weekends that we're going to the farmer's market rather than going every single weekend for the entire year, which last year we didn't even miss a market. Um, this year we're doing the first and third weekends at the farmer's market, which allows some time in between, which is really nice, even already, um, to do more things around here. And because I wanna put more focus into our garden and producing more food for us. So that's what I'm gonna be doing, but it takes a plan, right? It really does take a plan. And that's what I'm doing today. So we visited the garden. I showed you it's really sort of a mess right now. That's okay. Um, it's totally fine for things to just kind of sit for a little while. We don't have an extended period of time that things are not growing in the garden at all because we have a very mild climate compared to some. So there's no time for us to do cover crops and things like that in between. Now, if I had like a lot of extra garden beds and stuff um, that I could really and truly put to bed every year and do cover crops and stuff, then I would do that. But for my garden space, it's kind of working year round and then these short lulls between the fall garden, fall slash winter garden and the spring garden are, um, it's fine for it to just sit. So anyway, what I do to plan out the vegetable garden, that's what we're gonna cover today. And it's pretty crude system. I've got graph paper here. I have photos of the garden um, on my phone and I draw out the actual little garden spaces and I will plan out what I'm gonna put into them based on my little drawing here, based on what I wanna grow. Okay, so I'm also going to use this one here. I just almost hit myself in the face. I'm also gonna use this notepad here to literally list down the items that I'm going to be growing this year or hope to grow this year. And then we will figure out based on all the things that I wanna grow and my actual garden space, where things are gonna go, logistically speaking. So what I'm gonna do now is just list out the things that I wanna grow. So I know we want tomatoes. Now, I don't know offhand exactly how many varieties of tomatoes. I can go through my photos here in a few minutes after we make the sort of master list of things and I can put down the varieties that I've actually started. That way we know exactly how many plants we're gonna be putting out. We've got tomatoes, we have peppers, I'm leaving some room here so that I can write the varieties and things underneath. What else will we have? I know we'll do cucumbers. That's not how you spell that. How do you spell it? C-U-C-U-M-B-E-R. My gosh. Cucumbers. I know we'll do some squash. We're not huge squash lovers, but I do like to grow some zucchini and things. Um, I know we will do. What else do we have out there? Tomatoes, peppers. I'm gonna move down over to this section here and this is gonna be herbs that I wanna start. So we will have chives. I've got one of those. I know we'll have dill, basil. Um, we will have cilantro, more cilantro. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What else do we have? Let's look at the pictures and see, not that picture. Let's see what kind of plant starts we have so far. There's plenty that I'm forgetting. Potatoes. Okay. I'm not gonna put the flowers down because most of the flowers um, can go anywhere. I won't really be too worried about where they're gonna go because I'm just gonna tuck them in places between. Okay, so I've gotten to a point where I've got kind of all of my little beds mapped out here. This is the one that is the long section. I'll pop some pictures in here too so you can see. So there's eight rows in that biggest, in the biggest section of the bed. 
this row here already has some garlic in it and that will be there for quite a while and I'll figure out what to put there after the garlic is done. So the only other thing that's already in that bed is a little corner of oregano. So lots of room in each of the rows there. Now I do still have to clear them out of the fall and winter things that are still there, but we'll take care of that at some point as well. Okay, the next bed is the one with the big blackberry trellis and another section of trellis there. So this one is the new compost bed that I made. I showed you that too, where I took out the old compost pile and wood system that we had there, and I made a big bed there. So we'll figure out what we wanna put in this, in it. But this one is the one with the trellis that has clematis, blackberry, and grapevines already on it. So those are kind of the anchor things that are in that area. And I can't plant in this area, that, that, that's what that means. And then as I said before, well, maybe I didn't, but I'm gonna use, I'm not going to use the back side of this trellis for planting anything this year, because when I have uh, tomatoes growing on the other bed, and then I have other things growing on this bed, it becomes way too jungly to even kind of get through there. So anyway, I'm gonna leave this side of that as walkway entirely. But that means I've got a little area to plant here on this end part of the trellis on both sides and then on this side of the other section of trellis. So we'll figure that out too. The new compost area bed is just a big open book at this point. So I'm not really sure about it, but we'll figure it out. And then the other two planting areas that I have are the cold frame, which I will probably, I do know that I'll just do herbs in it. So all my herbs can basically go into this cold frame area. And then I have that area on the back fence that I'm thinking too. So what I was thinking for that back fence area is that I will put some sort of trellising that, um, you know, either I can attach that trellising to the fence, to, the, to, that, to our side of that fence. So maybe that would be good for, um, more of a lattice style of trellising. And then what I wanted to grow in that area is uh, pole beans. So lima beans and other types of vining beans because then they're completely out of the way since they have to stay there for such a long time and grow and then basically dry in place. And then since I don't wanna have um, vegetation growing on that fence year round, once those beans are done, then I can remove all of that vegetation off the fence area and it'll be back to clear and clean. So, does that make sense? That kind of makes sense and it sounds like it could be a good plan to me. I could also put the Black Eyed Susan vine there and um, that can stay there at that place. So let's just start to write some things in here. Cold frame is pretty simple because what's gonna go in there is basil. Ooh, I do not like that. I need something that I can see. Basil, um, cilantro, so I need a lot of cilantro. Dill, uh, maybe some chives, I'm not sure. Because the thing is for herb seeds here or for herbs to grow here, they grow like gangbusters in the early spring and summer, but it does eventually become way too hot for them. And so the basil, cilantro and dill, they will be done relatively early in the season for us. So I like to get a big, big harvest of them and do a lot of preservation of those. And then that will be done because it just gets too hot for them to survive. Now I might I may be able to do more of a succession planting this year, but I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. So the back fence, what we're thinking is I'm just gonna kind of write it in here. Add trellis to the fence. And then um, we're gonna use this for use for pole beans and vining flowers. Like morning glory. I like to grow morning glory, but I wouldn't really put it somewhere that it would just take over. So this might be a good spot for that too. So I'm just gonna kind of jot down Black Eyed Susan, fine. Morning glories with a question mark. 
Oh, so we'll do just pole beans. That seems like it could be a really good option for this area. Okay, then, oh, one more bed that I do have is that side bed that's just a square bed. It's pretty small. I think it's only three by three. So there's a trellis that's in there now, just like one of those more V-shaped trellises. I'm not gonna use that this year. I'll move that to somewhere else because the thing about that bed having a trellis in it is that it the backside of that on the outside, the chickens and the turkeys can get to that. So anything that grows up that trellis, like for the last couple of years, I've put a vegetable, I mean, not a vegetable, a cucumber plant or two there and the birds can get to that. So they eat not only the leaves, but they can eat the cucumbers or whatever is growing on it at that time too. So it's not a great option for trellising. So I need to go a different direction with that. What I'm thinking is to do squash in this bed. So what I could do is basically divide it into four. And I think that'll just kind of make a mark here on my drawing. That way I remember. The thing is when I get out there, I don't remember the plan unless I have truly made a plan. Now I can tell myself all day long, oh, I'll remember that, but I will not, I will not remember it. So I'm just gonna draw squares there and divide it out and then we can put squash in here. So yellow squash, these are things that I will direct seed out here. And we'll probably just do two of each, two yellow squash and two zucchini. One thing I do know, this bed here, this row is against the wire fence on this side. So I'm going to, what I typically do, and this has worked well for me in the past few years, is put some sort of trellising to go to that wire fence. And I will put, most likely I'll just put all my cucumbers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this in. First, I'm gonna write add trellising and then we will put cucumbers. Cucumbers are gonna be direct sown into the garden. So what I'll do is I'll direct sow my seeds and then I have to cover them over with a basket so that nobody eats them when they germinate, but that's what I'll do for that row. The next row over here, probably will do some sort of low bush style something. Actually, I could put my green beans here because they'll be a pretty low bush style plant. And then this has a nice division in between where I can walk easily. So that's probably actually a good spot for those. And I can probably put like a lot. I can really intensively plant this row because it's a pretty big, it's actually one of the wider rows that I have. So yeah, we'll put down here bush green beans. Okay, so here in this little extra, there's probably two feet of this row left that doesn't have garlic in it. Th these are the type of areas where I will just put in something for filler, like flowers or, you know, like the echinacea or the um, calendula and things like that. And honestly, I'll disperse all of those things throughout the entire garden, through all of the rows. So this is the trellis here for the tomatoes. So on both sides of it, we can do tomatoes that we can tie up to the trellis. And um, I'll have to go out into the actual greenhouse and see exactly how many varieties of tomatoes I have and how many plants. That way I'll know a little bit better if they will all fit here or if they will not. If they don't all fit here, then we can go over to that other bed there, the one with the blackberry vines on it and everything, and we can put the rest in there. Pepper plants, we can stake in any of these rows. I don't know, again, <laughs> how many pepper plants I have exactly, but let's see what else we have that we wanna put in. So corn, I do wanna grow corn, but I think we're gonna to have to make a new bed for it entirely because I don't see anywhere that, that that it can actually fit into the actual garden this year. That's okay. I have more of that weed barrier fabric, so we can till a new spot for it. The corn will be fine to grow in, in a new spot. And then um, since it's a new spot, we'll use that weed barrier fabric on it and it shouldn't grow grass through. Cause this is a good, pretty good weed barrier fabric that I purchased. Carrots. I do want to have 
at least one full row of carrots. Then I need to put them somewhere where they won't be disturbed. So it would probably be this row here because the garlic will be going on its own for a while. Whatever we put here will just be flowers. And then um, we may be able to squeeze a tomato down here at the end of the garlic, but yeah, let's try, let's do carrots here. So now I feel a little bit better, but now we need to go out into the greenhouse and see exactly how many varieties of things that we have, like for real, for real, because it's time to get serious about getting them out into the actual garden. So we'll jot down how many tomatoes, how many peppers and all of that. That way we could see, is everything really gonna fit in there or not? Do we have to make some hard decisions? Maybe so. So let's run out into the greenhouse and we'll um, check the varieties of things and see exactly what we have growing and where they're gonna go. And then we'll have our garden plan set. Okay, you guys, we gotta quickly finish up this garden planning. That way I can move on to something else. I need to move my little chickies from up front onto the tractor here in the backyard, collect eggs. I've got a few other things I need to do, but before we do that, I wanna wrap up my garden plan be, uh, by checking to see exactly how many tomato varieties I have and how many pep... This is the thing about roosters. They only do that when I'm out here. So I need to check to see how many tomato varieties I have and what they are, determinate or indeterminate and how many pepper varieties I have. I have Better Boy Plus here. I have two back there that I don't even know what they are. Why did I not grab the tag for them? They, these are ones that just came from our uh, plant man, Mr. Sunny. That might not have helped. These are ones that just came from my plant man, Mr. Sunny, down the road. So some of them I have a label for, the other ones I don't. Marconi, Marconi pepper. And so I have three, three tomatoes. One, 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 unknown, unknown. Boone tomato. That's those teeny weeny ones. That was the free seeds that I got from Baker Creek. We're going to try those. Yellow pear. I know offhand that those are indeterminate. Those are a, like a cherry variety. Two spoon tomatoes. Uh, the cherry tomatoes, I have four. So I probably won't plant all those out, but we'll see if I have room. Whatever I don't plant out, I give it to my neighbor, Mr. Ronnie. Bread and salt. I have four of those. Grapeette. Those are so good. Grapeette. Four of those. These are tomatillos, I believe. Paste tomatoes, that's 16. Tomatillo, that's eight. Okay, so that's all of the tomatoes and tomato-like things, the tomatillos. Peppers. Cayenne, I have 12. Serrano, I have six. And jalapeno, six. Ancho and pepperoni, pepperoni. Six each. And then I have six bell peppers. This is way too many plants for the space that I have. I, I, I can already tell. I also bought some more peppers this Saturday from the plant man at our farmer's market. And a red, orange. Okay. A red, an orange, and a purple bell. And then I also bought one Tabasco pepper. One. Okay, that's quite the list there. So it's a good thing we have several rows left for which to plant into. <laughs> Let's go inside and see exactly where we can fit all these in the rows. Okay, you guys, so for our final quandary of the day, now we're going to figure out how to transfer all of this into one, two, three, four rows. Basically about five rows. The list is complete. Um, Alan came by, came by for a minute. They're off to pick up a new, not new, a new used, um, like ATV thing, because our, what we call a buggy, our buggy is down and out. We're not sure how to fix it. 
yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, we, we're just ready to change course on that thing. Anyway, he's gone to get the new buggy and I really just had to use my brain to kind of make the plan here. If you had watched, you would have seen it took me about 30 minutes of pondering. So don't worry, you didn't miss much. I've got everything in here, so I'll just run through it once more with you and then that will be the end of this video. We're coming to the end of this video, but I will show you, of course, when I do put this stuff out in the garden. And we also have a few things to do yet to clean up the garden and get it ready for planting. So anyway, let's look at the plan one final time now that it is an actual plan. <laughs> we'll start on the left-hand side, like when you're looking down the rows. Cucumbers will be here. And I have the varieties that I have kind of chosen for this year. I've set those seeds aside. We'll go through those more closely when we actually plant the stuff out. Bush green beans will be in the row next to that because they're nice and low and they won't interfere with the cucumber vines or anything. Um, next, we already have the garlic that's in there. It's not done yet, so it'll be there for a while yet. And then we have this area here, which we'll tuck something into. I don't know what yet. Marigolds and other stuff like that, which now I, you saw I have all those marigolds in the greenhouse and I will be putting those into the garden um, alongside all this stuff. So I just tuck those in different places throughout the garden. Okay, so let's keep on to the next row here. This will be a row of carrots. And then the next few rows are all peppers. I decided to go all peppers here. So I'll turn my paper, that way you can kind of see a little bit better what these rows are. Cayenne peppers, I have 12 cayenne pepper plants. I like to make um, pepper sauce every year, hot sauce. So I wanted to make lots this year. So I'm gonna grow 12 plants of cayennes. They seem to do really well. They're more compact plant. So I think I can get 12 in without having any issues with that. Next row is serrano peppers and jalapeno peppers, six of each. So that'll be 12 plants in those rows too. Over here, the, thought, the next row down, will be ancho peppers and pepperoncini peppers. I have four of each of those that I'm gonna try to put in. And then on the very end here of that row, I have one each of that Marconi pepper and Tabasco peppers. Those are just kind of like one-off peppers that I wanted to try and grow. Tabascos did good last year. I think I just waited too long to harvest them. I didn't really catch them at the right time and then the plant literally died. So um, I'm gonna do better about that this year. Down here in the final row, and hopefully this is going to be the most accessible row because it's on the outside, and um, this is all the bell peppers. So red bell peppers, orange bell pepper, purple. I have one of each of those plant, red, orange, and purple. And then the California wonder bells, which you can harvest either as green bell peppers or red. You can let them go longer and they become red peppers. Um, those will be in this row as well. So down at the end of these rows is that trellis area. So on the far side of the trellis, I'll have tomatoes. And then on the inside of the trellis, I'll, I'll have tomatoes too. And I'll show you exactly which ones. The Better Boy and then the two ones that I got from Mr. Sunny, our local plant guy that I didn't put the tag on. Um, two unknowns. So I don't know what they are. I can't remember. I can't remember. So I'll do those three here. And then the next three at this, at the, on the far side of that trellis will be the bread and salt. Those are big slicer tomatoes. Hopefully those will be good. So I wanna put them on the outside where I can get to them pretty easily. Next up on the inside is three rows, three plants basically of grape bet tomatoes. Those are kind of not a cherry tomato, but not a big tomato. They're in between. They're a good size for salads and stuff like that. The next one, I actually don't know which tomato I'm gonna to put here, but I'll put something there. And then a cherry here on the end, and then another of something. Because the thing is, all of those tomatoes that I started in the greenhouse, while I have, while I wrote on there four, that I started four of this and six of that or whatever, sometimes there's more than one plant that actually germinated in there. So I know I'm gonna have more plants than what I actually have written down here. And then the big, big amount of tomatoes is those Amish paste tomatoes. So those I've decided that new compost area bed, it's gonna have to be tomatoes. Now this stuff, watermelon and cantaloupe can vine underneath the tomatoes with no problem. So I think it's actually gonna be fine. It's probably like gonna be um, a good place for all that because you know, the tomato plants coming out of the ground, you wanna cut away the leaves and stuff like that. So it's not gonna be a bunch of bushy stuff down at the bottom of those. So it should be fine for the, the um, watermelon and things to run underneath of the plants. 
Okay, so 16 is how many Amish Paste tomatoes that I'm gonna try to grow this year. And hopefully I can fit them all into that new compost area bed. Oh, I also had over here on that blackberry and grapevine trellis, there's an end, you know, two areas on the ends, one on the uh, far end and one on this other end. So on the other end, I'm gonna do all the tomatillos, one on four on one side and four on the other because I am planning on this side. And then on this one, I'm gonna do yellow pear, a cherry tomato, and a yellow pear tomato. That way it'll be on an easily accessible area to me for those um, cherry style tomatoes and I can easily harvest those. Also, these plants need a ton of trellising because um, they grow like crazy. So that'll be an easy area for me to trellis in as well, to, to continually tie things up and everything like that. So that's it. That's the garden plan. We got everything in here. Um, now all I need to do is nail down exactly which like um, pole beans and stuff like that that I'm going to grow, but that's fine. That's easy enough to look through what I've got, and if I don't see something that I like within what I've got, or if I don't have any pole beans, I don't know that I do in the things that I have on hand. I'll just run to the local nursery and I'll grab some kind of variety that is recommended for my area. So we have one good nursery that basically only carries things that are, you know, local seeds that are really good for our area. So I also use the LSU planting guide, which is the Louisiana State University planting guide, and they have specific varieties that they recommend for our climate, disease resistance, bug resistance, all that stuff. And that is super handy too, but you can grow all kinds of things that are not necessarily recommended for your area. Just don't make those like your core varieties. Like if you're wanting to get a super, super abundant harvest, don't do those because it may or may not work out. So if I wanna make sure that I have like the most chance, the highest chance at success, then I will grow a recommended variety um, because they should do the best for my area. So that is it for me today. I think now, as I said, I've gotta go move those little chickies they're kind of like teenage chickies at this point, actually. So they're ready to go into the back. They need to get out of my front yard up here and um, <laughs> move along into their tractor in the backyard where they're not making such a mess anymore. So as far as garden stuff for today, that's going to be it for me. And you have to let me know in the comments below. Number one, do you like garden videos? <laughs> Hopefully you do. Hopefully you've watched to the end. Uh, but if you like garden videos, tell me exactly when you're kind of getting started on all of your stuff. Do you start after Easter? Can you start before where you are? Or do you have to wait a long time from now to start? Um, hopefully not, but maybe even if you do have to start a long time from now, maybe this at least gives you something that you can watch and get inspiration from anyway. So I appreciate you being here. I'm so glad you watched and I'm glad to chat with you today and I hope to see you back here again. Thank you.